Carl Sagan claimed science is a way of thinking much more than it is a body of knowledge. Perhaps that's true, but why is this way of thinking the correct one? Why should we trust this process more than other processes? Why is science so good at answering questions? And, well, for that matter, is it? Science takes nothing for granted, so neither shall we. Before we launch into explaining how to do scientific research, let's defend its approach. In a given situation, why shouldn't I just go with my gut? I know how to think and no one should tell me that it's wrong. If I believe something works, then it does. People probably deserve some autonomy over their beliefs, but that doesn't mean that other people should just go along with those beliefs. If we try to advance our knowledge based in this way, then we'd all just be taking sides in an opinion-based shouting match. And chances are we'd come out split about 50-50 at the end of that. Because... randomness. Well, so then why don't we just do what we were taught? Or what we've always done? Well, if we take that approach, then we can never grow and change. We would still be bloodletting and using corroded lead pipes. Why don't we just do what authorities tell us to do? Because authorities can be wrong. Just because an expert believes something doesn't mean that it's true. 1-3% to of climate scientists cast doubt on man-made climate change. We need a way to evaluate new ideas to see whether they are worth our attention. Enter science. But wait, science is often proven wrong. Why on earth should we bother to believe it? Science has three major benefits of note here. First, it has a clearly defined process which can be followed in any potential discipline. We have rules. You're expected to play by them. It doesn't matter what field you're in, as long as you are following the rules, you can play. Second, it is self-updating by way of being self-critical. If we initially believe something that is false, we will eventually update it because we're spending all our time criticizing one another and ourselves. Seriously, read some peer reviews sometime. It's pretty humbling. Finally, scientists aim to disprove and discredit their own ideas rather than support them. When you're thinking about a scientist coming to a scientific consensus, don't picture a pompous researcher wagging their finger and scolding you about your inaccurate, antiquated beliefs. Picture an exhausted researcher who tells you, I've been working on this for years, I did everything I could to show that this is false, and I, uh, I, I failed, I'm, I'm sorry, I guess... I guess we just have to believe this, I'm so sorry. When one fails to disprove, one is left with confidence in the original idea. It isn't immediately or intuitively clear why this should be the case, but I will be addressing this phenomenon in detail in future videos. I think this issue is central to even beginning to trust in science as a means of answering questions. For now, the most important take-home message is that science is a process meant to protect us all from our biases. No other approach even attempts to do that.